Good morning, everyone, and welcome to my kitchen. This is my first DIY project, and in case you don't know me, I'm Debbie. Um, after looking at several ways to refinish my cabinets and getting estimates, I decided that I didn't want to spend $7,000 to have my cabinets done, and I wanted the satisfaction of being able to do them myself. So, this is my first video, and I hope you're patient with me as I learn how to get through all of this. Anyways, so the project that I'm doing are my kitchen cabinets. You can see behind me, the upper cabinets have not been done, but the lower cabinets have been started. So what I wanted to do is show you how easy it is to use re thunk Junk paint by Laura. These are fabulous paints. They go on easily. It doesn't take a lot of work to get there, and I can even do it. So that's the best part. So anyways, you can see that I have my top drawer done. I have removed all of the handles and everything from the cabinets. And then uh, I removed the doors to make those easier to paint. Um, you can see that I have painted the insides of the doors as well as the trim at the bottom. And please notice that I've taped underneath my cabinet I've taped down on the bottom of the bottom shelf, and then I've also put some tape and paper on the floor. Now, I will tell you, if you've never painted before and you're doing uh, work that's close to the floor, this little tool is awesome. It's got your tape and paper, that, this is a six inch paper, that you take and you can pull out as much as you need, or you can pull it out, get it started, and just keep rolling if you have a long hallway or something that you're working on. You can pick these up at any um, hardware supply store. Um, again, I'm using my Rethunk Junk Paint. For this project, I'm using two different things. Um, I'm using the resin paint in semi-sweet for the bottom cabinets, and I'm using oyster paint for the top cabinets. And I'll show you what those look like here in just a moment. Um, I'm also using the prep. <clears throat> the prep is for cleaning your cabinets before you, or any project before you get started and helps the paint adhere better. Now, some people will put on a tough top that will seal after the paint to make it harden more. For my project, I'm not using the tough top. The reason I'm not using it is because I want to be able to go back and touch up anytime I need to. Or if I decide later I want to change colors, it's not as much work. I go back and prep again and then repaint. So we're going to set this aside for the moment. Um, the oyster color that I'm using is just a really light, almost like a creamy tan color. And I am using several different brushes. I have several different sizes of brushes. I usually use a one and a half inch and a two inch. Those seem to work well for my cabinets, as well as a scrubby pad. Now the scrubby pads are great for kitchen projects because when you spray your prep on, and you've got cabinets that haven't been painted in a while and with the way they collect grease, it's really easy to use the prep, use a, scr a scrubby, and I dampen the scrubby slightly just to make it more pliable or else it's really stiff. Um, another thing that I use is rolled plastic. These are great to be able to cut any size that you need and you can put it on your countertops like I've done. Uh, you can even put it on the floor in front of the paper so that that way you don't do drips. I don't know about you, but I'm not the cleanest painter. I, as much as I try to be, you can see by my shirt, I always get some on me. That's the reason I also have gloves on. So to get started, I've already started painting the outside of this cabinet. So this is the first coat using the Refunk Junk. The first coat, you don't want it to be perfect. You just wanna get some paint on there and let it dry so that that way you can adhere your second coat. For these cabinets, I've only had to put two coats and just go back and touch up some areas with a, just a dry brush uh, with the paint on it. Um, it just goes back and covers any uh, little blemishes that you might have. I have one right here above this handle that I'm going to touch up. And I'm gonna show you how to put on the first coat and then I'll start putting on the second coat so that that way you can see how it erases the brush strokes that you see when you get the first coat on. So don't worry about it if you have some brush strokes that you can see because those will go away once you put your second coat on. So another important thing, a stool. When you're doing the lower cabinets, it is backbreaking if you have to get down on your knees and try to paint while you're on there. This is just a little uh, tripod seat that you can use for camping or any other project. And I use that while I'm painting. So to get started, oh, one more valuable thing, a hair dryer. 
If you are trying to get something done in a day, a hair dryer is a must because you can dry it quicker between coats. So make sure you have one of these on hand. So to get started, I'm going to put my first coat of paint on my left door here. And again, you don't need this to be perfect. You just want to start getting some paint on it. You'll be able to see some of the cabinet behind the paint. That's okay, don't worry about it. Like I said, this is just gonna be our first coat. It's gonna be rough. We're gonna let this dry before we start applying our second coat. I'm also uh, painting my um, trim down below the cabinet. We're getting ready to put new flooring in and I wanted to get all of the lower cabinets finished before we have that done so I don't get any paint on the new floor. So again, while I'm doing this, I'm not worrying about it being perfect. I'm just getting that first coat on so that we can let that dry. So while we're painting, if you've already got one cabinet done, you can do the second one while that one is drying, add a little drying time with the blow dryer, and you're ready to put your second coat on right away. I do try to match the way the grain is going as I'm doing this painting, just because that's how I like to do things. I don't think it would make too much of a difference because you're gonna go over that second coat, but it does give you a cleaner base, I think. Okay, so there's my first coat. As you can see, it's rough. It's like the, it's like the door on the right. It's, you can see through it, but that's okay because now we're gonna come back and we're going to do the second coat. Now, if you're like me and you are messy, I also recommend putting uh, tape and paper or just tape wherever you have contact with any other appliances or countertops or flooring. So now we're gonna get going on our second coat and you'll see how nice this goes on. All of the other brush strokes are completely gone. I've already painted the inside of the door jam with its second coat, so I don't have to worry about opening the door at this point. You wanna make sure that when you're painting the insides of the doors, that you leave them open if you're not removing them so that that way they dry uh, completely. And I like to at least give it overnight so that that way you don't have any residual uh, dampness in the paint because then the little door tabs will stick and then you'll wind up having to retouch. So you can see how quickly this goes on and I'm just doing it kind of rough at the moment. I'm gonna come back and do some more smoothing in just a minute. But I'm just trying to get that second coat brushed on and then I'll give it a nice smoothing effect when I'm done with this. So I don't know about you, but when I got my estimates for what my cabinets were going to be, I was flabbergasted. For my entire house, it was going to be about $7,000. And I don't know about you, but I don't have $7,000 just lying around. So when I found We Thump Junk Paint by Laura and saw how easy it was to apply, apply and some of the uh, creativeness that you can do with this paint, I knew that I had to do my cabinets myself. Since I'm kind of a meticulous person anyways when it comes to projects, it um, was kind of right up my alley as far as being able to do it 
myself and knowing that I was going to do the best job that I could because these are for, these are for me. There. So as you can see, I've done that cabinet in just a couple of minutes. And the right one is now drying. It does need a little bit more drying. So I'm going to come up and I'm going to touch up these places that I was talking about up here that showed through after they dried uh, when I finished painting last night. Now the good thing about these paints is that you don't have to just do cabinets and uh, other things like that. You can do anything. I've painted some candle sconces that I've had on my dining room table that were just a clear crystal because I'm trying to update some of the things in the house to give them just a newer look without having to replace them. And since we are in a time of recycling, repurposing, this is the best way to do it. These cabinets are perfectly fine. They, are, uh, they were put in in 1993 when the house was built. There were no uh, damaged areas to them. Basically, they were just outdated because of the gold color and they just needed to be refreshed. So this is the best way that I could see to do these cabinets without having to come in and replace the whole thing. So now I'm gonna let that dry and I'm going to um, wait for the other one, the second side to dry so that that way I can finish painting it. I'm gonna give it just a quick run over with the blow dryer. If you're working in an area where it doesn't matter if you have extra noise, you can also use a floor fan directed towards the cabinet. You don't want it to, you don't want it on there while you're painting per se because it will make the paint dry before you have a chance to see that. If you find any areas that look gloppy while you're going through, just take and run your brush uh, with just a little bit of paint so it's kind of dry over the top of it. That'll get rid of any runs or drips that you might have. Well, as while I wait, that, wait for that to finish drying, I'm gonna take you and just show you what the rest of the kitchen looks like now that I've got it painted. So as you can see, the top is done in oyster. It's just a nice neutral color. Uh, we have a, the color on our walls is just a little bit, has a little bit more gold in it. And so we wanted something that would contrast, but we also wanted something that's gonna go with our countertops, which are a Corian countertop with just a speckled design of uh, variegation going from white to a, a medium dark brown. So if you like this video, I hope you'll put a like on it. And I will see you for my next DIY project. Bye.